here. Day one, episode one. Flesh for the Mammoth podcast. Uh, I'm Wooly. What's up, everybody? I'm Jim. Welcome to the show. Uh, Definitely took a long time for us to get here, for sure. Way too long, way too long. Uh, Quick introduction. Uh, This is the show where we're going to be talking about all kinds of uh, hopefully interesting stuff to you. We know it's interesting to us. Uh, We're going to be talking about all kinds of weird, unexplained phenomena, um, mostly uh, a lot about our lives, probably. Uh, We want you guys to come along for the journey uh, while we give this thing a try, and hopefully we can all have a lot of fun with it. Uh, Today, uh, today's topic, just getting right into it, kind of, because it's fresh and it's out there and it's in the headlines, is the recent UFO stuff that's been coming out with whistleblowers, and uh, there's been a lot of stuff this year in particular. A uh, bunch of stuff we're going to get into, uh, including the congressional hearings that happened today. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, get right into it. Yeah, I think um, I think a good place to start is uh, basically uh, all the recent stuff uh, we're seeing in the news from, uh, like, CNN News 18. Um, if you want to get started there. Uh, yeah, we can talk about I was watching it from the link that you sent me today, the hearing. Uh and uh, I heard some interesting stuff. I know we probably both listened at different times, possibly. Um, so we can get into that a little bit. Uh, sure. <clears throat> to, catch, to catch people up on what, what the hearing was, it was um, three people were being interviewed by members of Congress. Um, uh, Ryan Gray, who is a... No, that's not him. That's David Fraver. I'm not exactly sure who Ryan Graves was, to be honest with you. He didn't speak a lot, but he was one of the interviewees there. Uh, the two men that spoke most, uh, obviously the whistleblower from last week, uh, David Grush, who is Air yeah, Force Intelligence, right. uh, retired Air Force Intelligence. Uh, he had, he's the one that I think really was trying to set up, like trying to uh, find avenues for people to report this and pilots to report this type of stuff. Uh, and the other guy sitting next to him was Commander Fravor, and a lot of people, David Fravor, and a lot of people might know him from the Tic Tac UFO incident from 2004. Uh, so we'll we'll get into a, a lot of what they have to say. Uh, that video of that 2004 Tic Tac um, UFO has actually been declassified, and you can find it now online. Uh, and that was involving the USS Nimitz. He... Uh, Reportedly, apparently there was, a, from what I understand, a whole fleet of these things. Uh, but they saw a tic tac shaped UFO in the sky. You can see the video off of their scanners. Um, and yeah, it, he brought this to their attention, but nothing ever really came of it. Uh, and that's the problem with a lot of the whistleblowers that I am gathering is that nothing really, there's no avenues for it to go further. And a lot of what they're saying is just getting stopped and not really going to the correct avenues to be investigated. Yeah, it's that's pretty crazy stuff. I mean, um, I think New York Times, along with a lot of um, other news agencies and stuff like that, started uh, getting a hold of everything upon the original release in September 2020 or 2021, something like that. And then it kind of got hushed for a while, and it's um, it's pretty crazy to think that we're talking about this stuff now even just as my wife said earlier it was it it's cool that this stuff is getting talked about again but it's like what is what is going on behind the scenes right, kind of stuff you know like so like yeah it's it's pretty wild stuff i mean we basically have all but confirmation official confirmation that aliens exist and that we know they exist and that we are possibly retrieving and reverse engineering craft and and even i mean as go as far as to say that they found i mean and this is i believe straight from david grush's mouth that they found biologics at these sites now whether that means a live specimen or just a dead body i you know i, I that we didn't get he didn't really get into that that's, that's stuff that he wouldn't talk about uh in an open hearing, you know, publicly like he did, like was today. He kept telling him that he would talk to him, uh, you know, behind closed doors where it was a one-off with them and there was no public uh, right. arena for that. 
Uh, so, I mean, we're basically getting the confirmation little by little here that aliens exist, and there's not much pushback from it from the government. Uh, there is one guy that called uh, the hearings today an insult to the people that work for him, which they work for an office that was set up just for this type of thing. And he claims that there is an avenue to be used and that David Grush is basically out of his element, so to speak. I'm not going to lie, uh, at times, watching it, it it did feel like some things that were being said was mainly just speculatory, and he, at times it seemed like things were being said just to try to say the right thing that they didn't really know for sure about, but they were trying to hit something on the head to to raise a flag and be like, oh, wait, that's actually like a real thing that can be dug up or something like that, you know, and right. it's a lot of information to take on. Uh, it really I think, is. I mean, without, <clears throat> go ahead. I think, um, I think that what we can say is we know that we are being visited for sure. I, from, oh, yeah. from all the information that was released, we know that there's something out there and we're calling them ufos or uaps or some other three-letter bullshit thing yeah, um, some acronym yeah right like and we're not <clears throat> we're not totally sure if if they're manned or not we don't we don't really have all the facts in front of us i mean for all we know these things could actually be some kind of creature in itself and it's not actually being piloted it is something right like, it's like in a itself bio right or something right so <clears throat> i was probing around a little bit with this and i was looking up whistleblowers and one of the things that i came across uh, was a three-part series by a guy named sean ryan and, and he has a show uh it's a podcast called the john sean ryan show uh, you can find it on youtube uh, i'm assuming spotify all that stuff um and I encourage people to go and, and watch these uh, interviews for themselves. Uh, but they piqued my interest because they dealt with uh, basically UFOs and secret knowledge of UFOs and stuff like that. And uh, there was a uh, there was a three part series. Uh, unfortunately, I only had time to watch two of them. But they involved uh, a man, uh, two men. Uh, each interview uh, was the first one was Michael Herrera. He's a Marine, uh, now ex Marine, I believe. And the second interview was a man named DC Long. And he is uh, ex-army. So these are military guys. Um, the one, Michael Herrera, was on, to give you a quick synopsis, synopsis of it, he was on an aid mission in Indonesia. And he stumbled, him and his squad, it was him and five other men, so it was six men total, stumbled across a spacecraft in the middle of a valley in the jungle. Uh, from what I remember, he said it was about the size of a football field, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and they crested a rise at one point, and when they came down, in, they saw it as soon as they crested the rise. And it was just a UAP, I guess is what you'll call them, it just hovering there. It was no, um, no wires, no platforms or anything like that uh, holding it. It was just hovering midair. So they uh, they descended toward toward it down the valley. And once they got basically to the, to the, to the base of the uh, incline they were on, they were approached immediately by, uh, I believe he said it was an eight-man fire team. Uh, and they were at them in, uh, I don't know the technical terms, but they were basically had them in their sights so that if anybody moved, it was gunned down. They, they weren't shooting at themselves or anything like that. It was, the way the guy made it sound and the way he said was, it was very professional. Like they had done this before, rehearsed it many right. times. Right. Uh, they took all their guns, they took all their IDs, they were taking pictures and stuff. And in the meantime, um, the lead guy, the, the head of the team, he was glancing around, taking stock of what was there and this and this and that. And he kept looking at the spacecraft itself, or rather the UAP, whatever you want to call it. And it was hovering, and he said that it was, I believe, like hexagonal or some kind of, like, it had corners to it around the edges. Uh, and it was made from panels. It wasn't one continuous material uh he also described a platform underneath of it that was made of the same material it was made of based on the color and 
to make a long story short, he saw trucks pull up into this thing, and uh, they had cargo on them. They had uh, like uh, small sea crates, small shipping containers on them, and they would drive onto this platform. And basically, I think he said there were four trucks, and the platform raised up into this UAP. There were no wires attached to the platform. It just hovered up into, like it was the floor of whatever the UAP was. He couldn't see the underside of the UAP, and he couldn't see the other side because of the nature of the platform underneath of it. Uh, all this is going on while these dudes are yelling at him, you know, get the fuck on the ground, all this crazy stuff. You know, military intimidation tactics. Um, so Classic. Classic. Event- eventually, what ended up happening was the spacecraft rose up, and the whole time he said there was a hum. Like, uh, think guitar cable hum is the way he described it. Uh, this spacecraft rose up above the trees and then took off towards, I believe he said towards the ocean, because they were maybe a few miles from the ocean, if I remember correctly what he said. Uh, and the thing just shot away, like way faster than a jet. He said, you know, you, you can see a jet flying by, even as fast as it is. You can make out the shape of it, what it is. He said, this was a blur. It just disappeared. It's gone. Um, and so this keeps going. And again, I encourage people to look at, to listen to the interview. Uh, it's the Sean Ryan show. The guy's name is Michael Herrera. Definitely. Later on during the, later on during the debriefing and stuff, he talked about someone actually somehow explained to him what was in the containers or gave him an idea of what was in the containers. And the containers were people. People were in the containers, humans. Uh, and it was. From what I could gather, he suspected it to be a human trafficking uh, organization or whatever. They were they were human traffickers using UAP uh, non-human technology to traffic people around the world. Uh, almost that's like really what he almost like the um, oh. even the harp stuff and all the crazy stuff oh. we could touch base with with. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's, all the people talking really about nutty. portals and and stuff like right. that. That like there's a portal up around Harp, and I believe that's right. in um, like Alaska. And yeah, we'll get into believe, that another yeah, yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like it's crazy to think I, about that. I, like, actually, I, I think that David Grush even mentioned extra dimensional. Like it doesn't. It's not necessarily even like so, space. like Bigfoot. It might. Right, like it's coming to us from another dimension, and he he actually described the principle of uh, uh, dimensional shadow, where so like we're three dimensional, but if you shine a light of us on a paper, we create a two dimensional shadow. So he he proposed the idea essentially that it might not even be objects in our space; it might be their shadows being projected from a higher dimension, so to speak. Like. And that's and that's why it doesn't come up on radar and yada yada. And I mean, you but know. some of these things are coming up on radar, and that's the other thing. Yeah. Like, there's so much to to all of this that like it gets it could you even be different spinning. technologies from different races of of extraterrestrial or whatever they are. Right. You know, it could even be different technologies. I mean, it, who's to say that they all rely on the same technology to get them places if there are different races? There was a Russian diplomat at one point that uh, back in the early 2000s, I don't know his name. I mean, this is a long time ago. And he was, he said, uh, what struck me is he said that there were up to 17 different races visiting us at any given time. And in, yeah, in an I, array of different yeah. vehicles, triangular shaped, cigar shaped, you know, tic tac shaped, uh, circle, saucer shaped, like he, he said there were up to 17 different species, so it's it's even possible that they rely on different technology and come from vastly different places. It almost seems like like there's there's a lot that crosses over with those that believe, um, like Sasquatch is not from the Earth. It's from even like another dimension altogether just like with the um the ufos and stuff like maybe what we're seeing isn't its actual form we're just kind of like getting a glimpse in a interdimensional tear or or something something. right 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 it's 
Yeah. It's fucking crazy to think about, man. Like, there's so many things that go over top of one another in these layers. And, oh, and, I mean, dude, we can get into so much. It's it's ridiculous. Right. I mean, if, if we're talking if we're talking UFOs, I mean, we could uh, just to mention something really quick that, that has always sort of struck me and supported other theories of mine and other questions is uh, from the book Behold a Pale Horse. I know you're talking. I know you know what I'm talking about. Um, uh, William Cooper wrote it, and right. it it basically a conspiracy theorist's wet dream of a book. Like it just details so much different shit that has happened and JFK assassination and and mind control from the government and all kinds of that stuff. One of the things in this book is uh, the the author uh, was stationed on a ship in I don't know in the ocean somewhere Atlantic Pacific I don't know, but he very clearly uh, described. Just a a spaceship coming up out of the ocean and taking off. You know, so it's like, where's it coming from? Well, even in the records that we apparently have uh, that were documented by Christopher Columbus and his crew, um, even though he did, he wasn't the first to, to have, uh, sure. in their words, founded the Americas. Uh, we're not going to go there, though. Um, he yeah, even right. has it in his logs that they've seen things that were coming up out of the water and flying off or hovering in the sky and then descending down into the depths of the ocean. It's right. It's crazy. Which, I mean, who, who knows what? I mean, like, this goes into all different kinds of other pathways uh, that deal with uh, Hollow Earth, Mount Shasta, all that crazy right. stuff that people have probably heard or and we'll get into all that i mean we're going to probably sure. touch on it a little bit today maybe but then we'll have deeper examinations of that stuff um sort definitely of to the, uh, definitely we want to promote like that our show is not the be all end all source for all the information mm-hmm. we're going to give sure. you the information that we've done our due diligences on to say yeah, that as far as we're aware is this is real shit and we're going to give you bullet points and stuff on it and we want you to do your own due diligence and get into it like why don't you want to know about this stuff whether it's ufos or whatever it's as simple as a google search do a little bit of re or bang or whatever your thing is do a little bit of a a search on it uh take what we're talking about take the names that we throw out there and go look them up you know don't just take our word for it you know, because we're nobodies. We don't really know anything. Uh, we're just going off of interesting stuff that we heard and topics that excite us and make us make our minds want to talk about this stuff. Right. Not um, even UFO related or paranormal, even yeah. like just yeah. music. Yep. Um, uh, the St. Anger snare drum. We'll get into all that, too. You know, that's we'll that's going to that. Yeah, there's going to be a life-changing event that's going to go down on that episode yeah oh yeah it's going to be the bee's knees and you know just everyone's not going to want to like you know like not be a part of it like i'm telling you if phones are going to be ringing off the hook for this it's going to be hysterical (laughs) how mad everyone is going to be just (laughs) Oh, it's really oh, wow. something that I'm I'm dreaming about, and you know, it's, it's be great. oh, 110 percent. So anyway, to get back to what we're feeling today, um, so the other story I want to get into with the whistleblower thing, real quick, not to uh, not to keep going and droning on myself, uh, but this ties into something I heard a long time ago. Uh, so. The second one was uh, a whistleblower interview that I saw with a dude named D.C. Long, and he's uh, ex-Army, and he ended up doing contract work with his father, and uh, from the way he tells it, him and his father were really close, uh, but his father had some connected friends that he didn't really know. He knew a couple of them, but he didn't really know them. He knew his father knew them. He knew what they looked like and stuff like that. So his father gets a call and, hey, you know, basically come on down to this place. Okay, cool. So the, the, the place they were set to go was Range 19, uh, 
and I I didn't catch where they were, what base they were on. It might be, I think it might have been Fort Bragg. Uh, but anyway, they go I there. I think they, it might have been, yeah. The, I think you're right, yeah. They, they go into this building, then and they go, they take an elevator down, uh, and they tell them, basically, look at the guy's shoes in front of you, don't look up, just walk through well, how the hell can you do that? Yeah, when I would have. Entered, I would have failed. <laughs> well, all the way. When they entered the room, Better than the, the guy, guy got said, shot in the, the back of the thing, head, for example. <laughs> right. He uh, he said the first thing he saw when he walked into the room was this monolithic, this this monolithic slab, like almost like granite, uh, and he was maybe six and seven feet from it. And the closer he got to it. The, he felt like a hum. He didn't hear the hum, but he felt it, like in his bone. Like a frequency going off, but no sound. He said the, the most sound there was was our footprints. Uh, so he said, a long, again, long story short, you'd have to watch the interview. Uh, he bent down, like pretending to tie his shoe or some shit, and he glanced underneath this slab, and there was nothing under it. It was just hovering there. Uh, and he could see technicians on the other side of it. And also, when he looked over his shoulder, apparently, like, back under the other way, there were two boulders. One boulder was on the ground. One boulder was also hovering, just like the slab. And there was a guy spinning it, effortlessly spinning it. Uh, on like, top. Um, audio manipulation or something like that, like... I think right. it was said that they believed that it was, it was sound they were using or something like that, like a, a pitch or something so like, like that. Yeah. So like to get into that a little bit, the guy said that that on top of the the boulder that was hovering and the slab that was hovering, there was a little black box with leads that came out of it and went into the slab. And I assume likewise for the boulder, uh, which is really, really, really interesting to me because you've heard me and you've heard me talk about this before. There's a place in Florida called the, the coral old man Castle. that did it with all the coral and shit is exactly and, where my right. brain went to when he brought up the black box. And he built this place using a tripod with a little black box on top. And when he was asked how he did it, he said, I discovered the secrets of the Egyptians. Uh, there were also two witnesses, two kid witnesses that saw him effortlessly, effortlessly lift blocks and move them. Ton, like two ton blocks, like they were weightless. Yeah, fucking huge, crazy so, amount of weight. When this, this guy mentioned the black boxes on yeah. top of the folder, it really made my ears start ringing. Like, wait a minute, I've heard of these black boxes or something similar to them anyway before. So, that's basically where my my interpretation of that story ends. I mean, he goes on to say that he believes there was an assassination attempt on his life. Uh, he, his dad also turned his back on him for some reason, stopped talking to him, wanted nothing to do with him, all kinds of stuff. Uh, all because of, I guess, what he witnessed at this range 19. Uh, his father has since passed away and stuff like that. Again, I encourage uh, people to listen to the uh, podcast. It's the Sean Ryan Show. And the first one is Michael Herrera. The second one is DC Long. And those are the two stories that I just related to you. And But the second one really got me with that black box because I've heard of that type yeah. of thing before. Yeah. There's, there's another parallel we've had that we're going to get into in another episode involving magnets. And yeah. that is another, like, between this black box one and the magnet one with, like, the helmet. And then there was, um, I believe it was a motorcycle. That, they, that was the magnet. Yeah. Where he rev, yeah, the guy would rev the motorcycle and disappear. But there was a helmet also. And I remember yeah. years ago when we talked about this, I had mentioned, what if you put the helmet on and use that? with the motorcycle uh, just fucking <laughs> just hold on let me put this on real quick and try to do you know like this like 
crazy shit. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> like, what happened to him? He put the helmet on, like, oh. and got on the motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> right, like, but yeah, I mean, there, there's crazy shit like that, dude. Like, uh, like the, the helmet guy, like he ended up, ended up, I guess, phasing into another universe or whatever, uh, or to hear him tell it. And yeah. he was in an office building when he did it, and like the office building started to disappear and he was in a field yeah and there was a tree and there was a woman leaning on the tree and we should definitely like stop it. talking about this now though because yeah, we're not I gonna be able to talk about it later <laughs> incredible oh, we'll, we'll come back around it's, but yeah it's incredible uh, stuff i mean it's all this crazy, is gonna happen I mean, a like, lot <laughs> we're gonna yeah, get a lot. stuck a lot of this stuff touches on itself oh, it's it's crazy yeah. man it touches itself so like it, touch I um, <laughs> I've, I've long been a believer that aliens come here have been coming here uh, to hear to hear the whistleblower a couple of them tell it they've been coming here since the 30s and we've known about it and we basically reverse and retrieved and reverse engineered their products right and we're well beyond what the public knows is capable so i mean and i mean the government obviously when it comes to this type of stuff in my opinion probably can't be trusted but i mean like i, I mean i don't feel like there's like a whole lot of grounds for argument there to believe that right like uh, one of the guys said that uh, one of the whistleblowers uh this was the third episode i saw a little bit of it but he was talking about how they're starting to investigate quantum entanglement and how they would want to basically weaponize it, essentially. And uh, for, for anyone that doesn't know what quantum entanglement is, it's let's say you have two electrons and you get them in basic layman's terms, because I'm not a physicist, you get them spinning at the same frequency. And then you take one of them and you move it wherever you want to, across the room, across the earth across the universe it doesn't matter how far or how close they are together when you affect one the other one is instantaneously affected at the same time there's no time dilation it doesn't take time for the information to get there they both are affected because you messed with the one that's quantum entanglement and they're trying to figure out right. ways to utilize that militarily i suppose possibly for defense stuff like that you know i mean einstein even said like that we could use wormholes essentially to to travel in and out of even time and that's even to go with the theory that um that i'm kind of uh borrowing from a podcast that i really like called the cryptid factor and uh it's like reese darby and um and buttons i believe is uh the one guy that has this theory that it's that the ufos are actually people time traveling i i think is is his theory on it and it was very in, an intriguing um thought process that like maybe it's us coming from the future trying to halt an event or something and we keep getting it wrong or something like that it's it's crazy stuff like yeah. i right. i definitely um really enjoy their show when they do it um they uh yeah it's it's just a shame because they do like one episode maybe every couple months and they got lives and stuff but i really enjoy that show you should definitely check that out that's on like spotify and shit like that so cool um, definitely i um, so, like, one of the things uh, that, that, just to throw in something extra here, uh, that was mentioned, uh, or that I didn't stumble, I've known about it, I, I stumbled across it today, and, you know, doing some research for the, for the stuff we're talking about now, and uh, is the Black Knight Satellite. Uh, have, you heard of the, uh, have you heard of this? So, it's funny that you bring that up, because this is where I want to go with all of this, is my it's so fucking crazy that you brought that up because my like so uh another thing i wanted to touch on is they had mentioned 
that they believe that NASA is going to play a really big role in um, sharing information and stuff. And m one of my thoughts with the public, like, right, mean. right. Like what information can they give us without uh, releasing anything that without could hurt national security? Right, right. So yeah. my thoughts were, if you don't know what the Black Knight satellite is, um, it's something that's in our orbit and it's been there yeah, it's, and it's, it's been reported point. on since like man started documenting things like it's been around for so long um and i know there there were mentionings of uh trying to approach this thing and it would move away yeah um according to some this is according to wikipedia right here uh Black, according to some UFO, cons UFO conspiracists, <laughs> I wonder how that's going to change in the future. It'll be um, called uh, UAP um, some bullshit. <laughs> like, yeah, just, well, yeah, something. Yeah, yeah it's just astronaut theorists. The, the UAP um, doctrine, because if you say UFO now, that just means it's a right. fucking joke. Because... I love how they just steer away from like acronym like ufo okay people think of aliens don't use that use uap like oh, come on right whatever but uh anyway according to some to some the black knight is an artificial satellite of extraterrestrial origin that has orbited earth for approximately thirteen thousand years the satellite story is most likely a contemplation of blah 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 they go on to try and debunk it but uh, anyway, to look at this thing, it's it's pretty. It, this looks like a piece of metal that got blown into space. It doesn't look like anything spectacular, or yeah, but it, it's been floating it, up there for a long, long time. Apparently. It doesn't look like like a uh, manufactured object. It looks. Right. It almost looks like maybe looks like, like just. It almost looks like an just an oddly shaped fucking piece of rock, like it's, right. It doesn't right. look like anything, but like apparently, uh, there were reports that I don't know if it was via a shuttle or a satellite of our own creation where they've tried to approach this thing and it would move away from right. whoever was trying to approach it. How the fuck do you explain that? Right. In 1954, UFO researcher Donald Kehoe told newspapers that the United States Air Force had reported that two satellites orbiting Earth had been detected. At that time, no country had the technology to launch a satellite. Uh, I believe... Yeah, um, I mean, like... Uh, was it... Um, I can't think of who it was, but... One, um, it's gone. <laughs> That'll happen too. Uh, it, it's a, I'm trying to think of who it is, uh, that studied the stars and stuff like that. And in their reports from centuries ago, like this thing is mentioned in there, like they seen this thing when they were trying to map the stars and everything. It, right. it's just nuts. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to dig that out and and find who mentioned that now because I'm gonna get crucified for it. Like, ah, uh, just we're gonna talk about COVID and what we think it's done to our brains because I yeah. don't. I don't. I it's, don't feel like I'm the same person. Like, I no, just hit no, these points all. where I'm just trying to talk about what? something and then all of a sudden it's just it's gone and right i can't get it back it's crazy what's in my head doesn't come out of my mouth correctly or something it's yeah. weird yeah i know what you mean i've had that i've i told you i've had experiences like that and i told you also and i think it's messed with my eyesight like like i have to wear shades outside now like it's everything is super bright in the sun and it, 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 it's I not mean, fun that's just being outside in the sun like that. <laughs> nah, <laughs> not like it was before <laughs> <laughs> It's the government. The so bright, I gotta wear shades. It's um, the government, they're fucking with you. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. They're making the sun brighter. 
motherfuckers. <laughs> Turn it down. Right. <laughs> That's that harp right there. There you go. Dude. <sighs> Telling you. So let's uh get back to uh the CNN News 18 um live stuff they had on uh YouTube and stuff a little bit more. Uh so these gentlemen that were being interviewed uh you had mentioned that uh this one gentleman cried about uh he doesn't know what he's talking about because we already have an organization that takes in all these reports and stuff like that. And I don't I don't think they said that there wasn't one. I can see where like it definitely felt like that's what they were getting at. But I think they what they were trying to say is they want a system in place that uh military and non-military pilots and civilians of any nature really that witness these things uh can call in and be like this is what i'm seeing this is what's going on maybe have a team that can try and investigate this stuff you know i i don't know how you're gonna do that because it's going to be kind of tough to go out and investigate something that was in the fucking sky six hours ago right isn't yeah. there and now moving the way like, they do it's like good luck catching up with it right like <laughs> <laughs> call them and be like hey which one of you fuckers was uh flying around in this airspace you know at like <laughs> yeah, two right. o'clock in the afternoon we know you got their numbers anyway right like <sighs> um so according to ap news the the um the insulting remark that I made earlier, uh, it was a top Pentagon official, Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick, and he penned a letter a letter, yeah. uh, that was published on his personal LinkedIn page uh, and circulated Friday across you know various social media platforms and stuff. Uh, he criticizes much of the testimony from David Grush, uh, which this was probably the most watched congressional hearing almost ever. I mean, like a lot of people were watching this uh, because of the, he gave a interview David Grush did to, I believe, uh, was it News Nation or something like that? And that's really what everybody is referencing and that's what got this stuff going. And, but he called it, Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick called it today's hearings insulting. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Blah, 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 blah. My bad. I'm, oh, okay. Um, Kirkpatrick, uh, he was named a year named to lead about a year ago the Pentagon's All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, or ARO, A A R O, which was intended to centralize investigations into UAPs. So he's claiming that David Grush's claims that there's no right avenues and that it stalls is insulting to the people that actually work in the Aero office uh, centralizing these um, these reports that are being given in uh, to his office. Uh, they've been pushed by Congress in recent years to uh, investigate reports of, I guess, UAPs, devices flying at unusual speeds and stuff like that, making left and right hand turns on a dime. And they've been pushed by Congress for years, kind of, to start investigating this stuff better, and that's why the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, ARO, was set up. And that's where those remarks came from. He says that it was insulting of this guy to say, basically, these people aren't doing their jobs, is the way I'm understanding it. Right. But to hear David Grush tell it, they kind of make it harder, from what I understand, to, to do this. It, it doesn't really, it obfuscates the truth. Well, it's, it's like, if you guys are doing that job, where's all this information? Like, which I guess it's a matter of, we're trying to figure out how to start releasing the information to the public. But I mean, like some of the questions that were asked and, and well, what, these gentlemen that are answering that? these questions, it it's, 
some of it's again it's speculatory like do you think that there's like basically one of the questions was to do with like who do you think these people are that might be trying to cover this up and it's speculatory i mean they're basically talking about like a shadow government basically and right. and it's it's government and non-government officials that this is their lifelong job basically to like control this information very you know like x files kind of stuff and just it's it's something that i think x files definitely helped a lot in in the the waves that it made to try to get things out there for right. sure like it's it's definitely things that i mean it definitely raised a little bit more of a cultural awareness for uh, unexplained phenomena and stuff like that. Um, it helped push that in a more popular direction, I suppose. Right. I, I agree with that. Um, let's see. Where are we at here? Um, another thing that... Uh, was was speculatory but it's something that i don't see how we don't uh given just even the uh controversial uh conspiracy theorist side of things with um things that people have come forward with in the past and stuff like that which we don't know is all not true at this point um a question was asked to these gentlemen you know uh do you believe these things are in our custody and they said yeah I'm like yeah and um he claimed that there were quote non-human spacecraft and quote dead pilots right right like and and even bob lazar has made mentioning of that stuff and and you can take his stuff with a grain of salt too because right. it, there's so there's so much water added to anything that comes out to try and thin it out and and just dilute it like so that it makes it almost impossible for you to dig through and figure out what the fuck is actually in front of you right i mean it's not anything that we haven't surmised or like proposed in the past that the u.s covers up alien retrieval programs i mean you have a long history of rumors of men in black type people and the government actively suppressing uh these cases like um beginning with one of the most famous roswell you know what i mean there's there's that cover up uh, uh, um there's strategic bases around the country. I mean, obviously the popular area 51 type of thing where there's, you know, I actually have a guy that, um, I work with who was out there and he was at some base to watch something or, or other. And he ended up taking a picture when he shouldn't have. And they absolutely confiscate. I mean, it lights came on. There were people standing there. Like there were people you didn't even know were standing there until the lights came on. Yeah, And they came over to the fence, they took his camera, they took the roll of film in it out, stretched it all out, exposed it. I don't even, I don't even think they gave him his camera back. Probably. Not. Um, so, I mean, like, there is a long standing history of public distrust in regards to the government and aliens, the, you know what I mean? Uh, and I mean, to hear this guy tell it, it's a multi-decade program of retrieval and reverse engineering of alien, or at least non-human craft, craft that wasn't made by us here on this planet. Right. Um, they were using um, some descriptions were of dark gray or black cubes, dark spheres, or Tic Tacs uh, that were white and smooth right yeah i believe it's... the tic tacs were reported to be about 40 feet in length as well if i remember correctly right well, at least the one that that commander fravor was there for right there was mentionings of ones that were as big as football fields and like 
right. like you were discussing about um I believe it was the podcast that you were checking out yeah yeah yeah, yeah like can he you said imagine it was a very, like dude uh, can, uh, right uh, uh, can you imagine stumbling across a fucking spacecraft the size of a football field right or, I mean, could you imagine going into some bunker to fucking build an indoor range or some shit with your dad, and the next thing you know, you're looking at this block floating and, like, just floating? Like, like... Yeah. What? I mean, just to just to feed into that a little bit, um, have you ever witnessed anything um, personally that that you couldn't explain in regards to craft? No, not really. Not that. Not that I can say with any definitive that right. was something. Maybe a couple of lights or flashes here or there, but nothing. Nothing concrete where I was like there was a something there. You know, I, I, it hasn't happened to me. No. Right. Like for me, um, there was an instance I remember when I was young, riding in my parents' little Subaru station wagon. And I remember looking up at the clouds because that's what we did back then because we didn't have cell phones. Uh, right. And I saw something peek out like it came out from behind a cloud. It was there for a couple seconds and then it went back behind the cloud. And I am very fox molder about anything like... I, I don't want to call it a UFO, even though, I mean, by definition, I, I couldn't identify it. But, I mean, when I think back to it, um, I'm like, oh, you know, it was, it was probably a reflection in the, the window that I was looking out of, you know, and the sun glint in a certain way. And, and the car was moving when I saw this thing. And that's, that's where I end up with anything that I ever witness. Um, extraterrestrial or paranormal or otherwise I don't I don't go looking for this stuff um, even nowadays in 2023 there's times where I'm not looking at my phone I'm looking at the sky just because yeah. just just the idea of how well, small the sky is awesome to look at right the idea to yeah. me of how small we are in the universe is just in possible to understand um there were two other instances i had uh where i saw something um and both times i was in the uh luxurious cape may new jersey um i was at work i was across the street uh from the shore and there were two instances where I saw just a black sphere. We're talking like uh, nobody on the beach. Like we're talking like out of summer season, like it's cold, like over like late fall into the winter, like n not really anybody's out on the beach or nothing. And there's definitely no kites in the sky and, you can see boats and stuff out in the distance, you know, and, and that's, that's where my brain goes is I'm like, uh, it's probably something just like way the fuck out Brick there. Yeah, right. right. And both times, like it, it definitely appeared to be a black ball, but it was just, it was impossibly far away from where I was standing like it was so small but it was there and it wasn't moving and one time I caught a glimpse of it I was getting into an elevator and I realized that I was looking at this thing and it was just what the hell is that and the elevator doors closed and then I get down to the ground floor and I'm trying to look out and see it and I can't see it and there was another time that I did see something again. Um, but again, like I'm, I am my own worst critic and 
I want to believe in this stuff. I just don't have everything in front of me that I personally need to say that you know, a lot of this stuff is real. We do have the stuff that the government's releasing over time that it's just like, okay, I still don't know that I saw that stuff. Though. And that's like even with right. paranormal things that we'll get into in episodes to come. Uh, there is a gentleman that walks down my parents' hallway that isn't there. And every single member of my family has seen it multiple times. And um, people that we've had over, over the years that we didn't even tell about it just because it's just a normal thing that happens in my parents' house. It's not like we're reaching out to have fucking people bombarding my parents, you know, like trying to do whatever and like yeah. it's not an interested thing <laughs> but like yeah well, there's, I got you. like there's been plenty of people that have s- said you know oh well, who who's the who was that guy what guy like i don't want to call it a ghost i don't i don't feel comfortable doing that but i don't know how else to explain it and i have witnessed some other things that um that i couldn't explain in the paranormal aspect to do with, I guess, ghosts or whatever you want to call it that I can't explain. But again, right. I, I'm not, I'm not trying to get out there and say I've seen shit because I don't know what the fuck I'm saying, man. <laughs> like right. to me, just I mean, phenomena. it's just unexplained phenomena. Like it's okay. I don't know what this is, but it's something. Right, it's it's something. Uh, <laughs> like to me, like <laughs> my brain chalks it up as like it's 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 energy, you know, that's just dispersing. You know, something happened. Right. Just I don't know. I don't know how to explain an that. imprint. Right, definitely. Uh, imprint energy, is a very very good way imprint. to describe it for sure. Right. So anyway, um, back to. Uh, so all the recent releasing shit. Apparently, Grush, uh, he was in the position where he was for four years in a role with a UAP task force. And I mean, he's basing what he's telling people. I mean, just to give you a little bit of background on where he's coming from, he's not just some dude being like, "Hey, I saw something." He he's had 40 different witnesses over a four over his four year span uh he admits he hasn't personally seen any alien vehicles or or bodies or anything like that but his opinions are based on the accounts of those 40 uh witnesses over 40 witnesses that he's talked to over the years um he alleged that the u.s has retrieved non-human biological matter you know all the stuff we talked about uh, so it's not just coming from nowhere, uh, seemingly. He has uh, apparently photography and video evidence. Uh, quote, my testimony is based on information I have been given by individuals with a long-standing track record of legitimacy and service to this country, many of whom also shared compelling evidence in the form of photography, official documentation, and classified oral testimony. He believes that it has intentionally been kept from Congress, kept secret. So you have a shadow facet of the government that keeps it from actual government or whatever, you know, like it's clandestine and hush hush and not supposed to be a known thing. That they're now having problems keeping secret, I suppose, just based on probably the sheer technology we have that now, hey, look, now we're capable of capturing these UFOs on our phones, on this, on that. Right. It's much harder to hide that type of information because so many people see it and not just collective hallucination type shit, but it's on like a hundred different phones right it's it's you know or whatever the case and that that comes to an interesting thing because you have all these people that are doing these bullshit videos and 
you know, they're like, oh, you know, we got, uh, we got this UFO footage or we got Bigfoot on film and it's just like, it's total bullshit, man. Like, and it's like, I don't, I don't really understand the whole trolling mentality on why you would want to do that. Why wouldn't you just want the stuff to be proven factual or total hoax? You know, and right, one way or the other, let right. it be known. Right, like let's yeah, just let's just get down the to the fucking the bones right. about just it say, and hey, just move yeah, the fuck on. Exist. Right, just say, hey, look, aliens exist. We know it. Uh, you happy now? All right, we can't tell you everything because that's national security. But here, have this. Right. Or do the opposite. Say, hey, look, no, nah, guys, we don't have alien craft. But then again, if they said that, nobody would believe them. If they said anything but we actually have alien craft. Look, here's a picture of one. No one's going to believe anything they say. Right. It, that, that becomes the problem. I mean, like, what's going to happen if they, you know, if they do have alien bodies? I mean, for all we know, for national security's sake, you know, they don't want to release these little gray men alien bodies because they've probably got these huge fucking dongs that, you know, like, just put all men to shame in the world and there's just a lot of guys that would want to kill themselves because they can't handle it dude like i right. mean i'm i'm not a part of that group i don't have that problem because right i'm i mean i'm just a fucking pitiful mess of we're yeah. not gonna go there Wonder, <laughs> I, 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 what is it i want to believe that's the, that's the deal. <laughs> i want to believe that I satisfy <laughs> um, so he, right so here I am reading a little bit more this is I'm on the uh, I'm on I'm on NPR for this right now um, so Ryan Graves was the third man there that that in the beginning I said he didn't really talk much uh, uh, maybe I didn't hear him talk much maybe it, maybe I wasn't listening in on the right part of the uh, hearing but According to NPR here, he recounted an incident with a flying object off of Virginia Beach in 2014. He was flying an F-18, and he came upon an aircraft that looked like, quote, a dark gray or black cube inside of a clear sphere. He estimated it to be 5 to 15 feet in diameter, and obviously unlike anything he'd ever seen, any, any kind of aircraft, uh... He also claimed that it could remain stationary despite hurricane force winds. Don't know quite how he knows that. Um, uh, do, 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 do. He, he told lawmakers his squadron submitted a safety report at the time, but that they received no official acknowledgement of the incident. He claimed that encounters in that region were, quote, not rare or isolated. He founded a group, Americans for Safe Aerospace. Uh, it supports aviators who have reported UAPs. He says that military and commercial pilots are seeing, are, uh, these things are basically performing maneuvers that are unexplainable due to our current understanding of technology and our capabilities as a country. And I guess he's providing support to those types of people through this um, through this group he founded, Americans for Safe Aerospace. It's, it's he said just if mind. everyone could see, he said, this is a quote, he said, if everyone could see the sensor and video data I witnessed, our national conversation would change. So let's see it. Right. That's my thing is like, let's, let's let's fucking see this shit like the i mean even the even the video that was released the uh tic tac video from the uss nimitz that um the 2004 video that commander david fravor was there for the one of the, the third guy in the, the one of the guys in the meeting today uh they released the video and i watched them but there's really not much to see it's all just f-18 or whatever it is you know their sensor uh screens that show you the uh i guess i don't know if it's infrared whatever it is that shows you you know I, radar what's in front of you and all i you believe see it is was little, infrared 
Yeah. All you see is a little dot on the screen. Well, not a dot, but like a little smudge almost looking thing. Right. It's, it's really hard to make anything out. I mean, so it's like, okay, yeah, you released something. And sure, maybe that's legit, a, a, a UFO, UAP, whatever. But it really doesn't look like anything to me. Like, I mean, like, uh, where's the videos and pictures that show crystal clear? Holy fuck, what's that? Or just, again, like, the one guy was like oh you know uh some people were concerned about you know where's the rest of the footage and and we shouldn't be concerned with that we need to be concerned about like what this thing is capable of and what it's doing and what we see it doing in the video and stuff like that and and i'm like well we we also kind of need the rest of it like i mean if you want to if you want to talk about shit like that we could talk about like you know uh, for example, the Patterson-Gimlin footage of what most people are the be-all, end-all, go-to for this is proof of Bigfoot. Well, I want to see the rest of the footage because I don't know. You know, like, show me show me what you got. Like, why, why is it through money or information? Like, there's always a fucking reason why we're not seeing the whole picture or the whole video and right. it's it's just like what why right. I, I don't i don't right. understand like i, I don't w- understand i want well, this stuff to guys, be like a was, book being slammed on my hand or, to show I think me it was, like i think it was craver that said that he um so i lost it sorry that's okay um while you're thinking about that you know like they both were also um asked uh if they thought that these uaps or ufos or what have you um are a threat and they all stopped for like a half a second and looked at each other and then they were all like well yeah like yeah but but what i believe they were getting at was they don't believe these things are necessarily a threat because if we're talking them like whoever the pilots are or whoever's in possession of these objects currently with the technology to do what these things are doing um clearly they would wipe us off the map so it's more like they believe they're a threat because like what our government would do or any government that could get a hold of these things would do is they would reverse engineer these things and i believe right. that they were getting more at create create war with right they they feel that technology. you know right. like if you have this technology yeah, before no, our country right. does correct um right. like a foreign nation reverse engineering this it's going to be right it's going to be the be all end all for any country that doesn't have that because one of the interviews, I believe it was Michael Herrera, uh, said just that. He said, basically, what you're getting at is if these things wanted to, they, they have no interest in us, really. It's like we're an anthill to them. Like, we just disregard it. Like, oh, they don't know nothing, whatever. Like, we're, we're not even right. going to bother with them. And he said uh, he feels like it's mostly, if anything, probably that. Why would they be hostile to us? If they wanted to be hostile to us, they would have already did it. We it would have been be, done. We would be done. Right. Right. So, especially if they have the technology to come here like they do on ships uh, from across the galaxy or across the universe or even through dimensions or or even through time, who knows? I mean, like, they got to have the technology to be able to just put it and we're gone. Right. I mean, for all we so, know, I mean, we're one of these things like kids, like science project. <laughs> I mean, how do we not know that? How, right? How do we not know that we're just a simulation, and that's why we haven't been erased yet? It's how a simulation we... that they're that they're running to. Hey, how would this go? Let's run the simulation real quick. Ah, oh, it's gonna end bad. Don't do it. How do and we know that really these nothing... things aren't angels? You know, I mean, there well, are some descriptions of angels as being almost mechanical in nature more right? than than. I mean, um, like, how do people? you explain something that you can't explain? Especially back in, in even in, biblical times, floating cities right. and and how do you explain flaming chariots and stuff explain, like that? Right, right, exactly. Right, like, you're like you're describing it like, uh, to your nonsensical um, because you don't have a 
you don't have a reference to describe it. Right. You're describing it to, to your knowledge at that time period. Like you, right. you you're not going to say, uh, it looks like, you know, a fucking Tic Tac because I, I would have to Google that information to find out when we first started getting the, uh, produced mint right. known as a Tic Tac right. to use that as a description. So, sure. you know, like, but I mean, like, Again, like, uh, what are we talking about here? Are we talking to, uh, you know, a- angels and aliens? Are, are aliens angels? Are angels aliens? Are they different? You know, that's a whole other topic we could get into. Oh, uh, we're going to. You know, I mean, we're going to get into the Nephilim and all that stuff. And, you know what I mean? That, that all hinges on sort of similar topics and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Um, For sure. So, but anyway, I think we're going to wrap it up for right now, guys. Uh, we appreciate you listening. Uh we want you to take what we have said, listen to what we're saying, and, and go search it for yourself. Uh, we hope you tune in next time and stuff like that. Uh, uh, we had a great time. Hope you did, too. Definitely. And uh, we will get back at you as soon as we can. Uh, we're uh, we're just starting out, so we're, we don't have all the ins and the outs yet. But uh, check out what we said. We're going to start trying to embed uh, links and stuff in the, in the descriptions and in the comments and stuff like that. So, on uh, our Facebook and stuff like that, uh, Flesh for the Mammoth on Facebook. Um, right. We're going to put links uh, in the comments section, you know, for each episode. And we'll try to tag it uh, episode one and so on and so forth to try and cover that base. Absolutely. All right, guys, listen, that's it. Uh, we'll catch you on the next episode. Uh, this is Jim. I'm Wooly. And uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Hope you enjoyed it, and and we'll see you next time. Yeah, definitely. Have a good evening, you know, and uh, just uh, do the stuff you got to do to to start digging into this stuff yourselves, you know, and and be interested. Do stuff, things, and, you know, whatever's legal, you know. Pay attention to the world around you and uh, pique that curiosity. Because that's what keeps it going. For sure. Uh, and you guys should uh, definitely have a good rest of your evening or morning or whatever time it is, uh, wherever the fuck you are. Have a good one.